Next question. Mm -hmm. Please. I think it's entirely up to you, actually. But since you're standing there, we can all see you. I, mean, I, think, I think when you're uh, criticising Dickens for his failings as a political theorist, if you like, which you are, you're, you're kind of criticising the milkman for not delivering bread and eggs as well. <laughs> um, my milkman does deliver eggs, actually. <laughs> you see, Sarah, it's possible. So I think our criticisms are well founded. <laughs> Apparently, you can get orange juice too. So, what's your point, sir? I ask you. What's your point? <laughs> I'll make it again in that case. <laughs> um, the, they're both, I mean, Dickens is a, is a writer, a creative writer, who has political concerns. Orwell really is a political theorist who also, by his instincts as well, manages to be a creative writer. And I don't think you can criticise Dickens for not doing something which he never claims to have done. It would have been a very short hour, sir, if we had it. <laughs> I mean, if all, if all that happens today is that people go away and read a bit more Dickens and a bit more Orwell, our work here has been done. Because ultimately, it's your decision that counts and not ours. <laughs> okay, we can, I think we've got time to take uh, one more question. There was the hand up. There's the hand down here. Yeah. Yes, is it still up? Oh, it is still up. Sorry. Okay. We'll take two more then, since I promise. Um, hi. Uh, as, well, you've talked about um, Orwell as his international region, his political ideals. Um, as novelists, though, specifically, not just as writers in general, don't you think that, um, uh, could you offer an aesthetic defense for Orwell compared to Dickens? No, you can't. Mm -hmm. Well, I can certainly offer an aesthetic defense for 1984 and, and, and um, uh, Animal Farm, which seemed to me extraordinarily spare. Um, and brilliant sort of elegies, and elegies are one word, fables. Um, I, de I think the novels, I think he, uh, and I think they, they resonate, they tell us what they invented, whole modes of, of understanding the modern world. And they do it, there is the, the, the sense of, uh, the sense of, I mean, of the two, I think 19, oh, I think Animal Farm is far more the Dickensian one, actually, because it's got all sorts of kind of extraordinary extravaganzas. Of, of imagination in it. Um, and I think that 1984 introduces you into a world which is Orwellian, and that is a very terrifying world. There's an imaginative um, sense of a political conflict which you feel part of. And I'll go back to the interrogation scene, which seems to me absolutely up there with Pinter. You know, I think he pre shadows a great deal of contemporary drama. So I think there's a, you could make a very, very good defence for those, but I would like to extend that kind of defence to the essays. I think the previous novels are, are incredible faulty. He is a man that learnt to be a writer in various different ways. Final question. I, I just wanted to make the point about Morgan as quality of writing. If you, if you put to one side the fact that he was writing about political theory and dystopias and, and the and state... And postcards. And postcards. Um, a similar writer who wrote at the same time as Aldous Huxley when he wrote Brave New World and he also wrote Island. Can you hear me? Yes. yes, um, yes. Um, and those are great novels looking forwards and looking at the political state and how it manipulates human beings. And whilst I enjoy those books very much, I don't think they're up, up there as writings no. with Orwell. Mm. So they're writing to me as, as a, a non-artist person, I'm a scientist, about these things. I, I have a higher regard for Orwell as a writer, per se, than I do for Huxley. Mm. Um, and I do agree with you. I think Dickens is an entirely different kettle of fish. <laughs> I love him too, but for different reasons. Yeah. I, I, I agree. I do think there is an aesthetic um, argument to be made for, for that very elegant... Um, Old Etonian, Anthony Pohl, George Orwell, um, Evelyn Waugh type of prose. I know Evelyn Waugh wasn't an Old Etonian, but he might have just as well as me. You know. that, that seemed to me so, it seemed to me Pohl and, and Waugh, both of whom I, particularly Waugh, I have huge respect for, yeah. and Pohl, Pohl particularly, the wartime volumes. But I mean, neither of them, and, and they're very great, they, you get into this, they're very great, but I actually think that Orwell is a much more, I know he's a better novelist, that's, I, I'm, but I think he, I think 
those particular novel, those those last two great novels capture something in a different kind of terrain than, than either of those. I They're much less specific. Yeah, I think all I was saying was really the quality of the the yeah. prose is one learnt in um, in Latin composition classes at public schools somewhere be, sometime between. 1915 and 1930, and I think they, they have a, a quali quality of, of loving, the, um, loving the paradoxical right. sentence and not being mad on adjectives and adverbs, which Dickens wouldn't have. I think there is yeah. a defence yes. to be made of yes. that particular level of plainness, but I still think that... Not a defence made by Philip, no. anyway. No. <laughs> I, still, I still think that the prose style of Dickens is just ampler by a degree of several thousand. Well, the moment has come to take that vote again. So bearing in mind all the different areas that we've ranged over in the past hour, can I ask those of you who are in favour of Orwell to raise your hands? Mm -hmm. I think, I think there have been some conversions yes. there. And those in favour of Dickens? Uh, yeah, Dickens just gets it, but he has lost some support. <laughs> <laughs> so thanks to Hardy, Sim Curley, to Jean Seaton, to Jenny Hartley and to Philip Hencher. And thank you.